Today I'm going to tell you the story of Hachiko. But first, let me tell you about Hachiko's owner. And his name was Hai Siburo Ueno. Ueno was born January 19th, 1872. In 1895, Ueno graduated from Tokyo Imperial University's Agriculture Department. He then went on to study Agriculture Engineering. On July the 10th, 1900, he finally finished his graduate work and all his hard work paid off and he came full circle and took a job teaching at the Tokyo Imperial University where he started his educational journey. Around 1915, Ueno would meet Yeiko Sakano and Yeiko Sakano would become the unmarried partner to Ueno for the rest of his life. From what I can gather, Ueno and Yeko Sakano met around the same time as he became the professor of the university's agricultural department, which would have been sometime between 1915 and 1916. So, Ueno met the love of his life and achieved his promotion to professor possibly in the same year, or very close to that. So life must have been very good for Ueno. And from what I can gather, this was a very great man. He was very dedicated and he accomplished anything that he put his mind to. Ueno's experience in agricultural engineering actually helped in rebuilding drainage systems after the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake, so Ueno was already making an impact in the pages of history. Now, around two months after the great tragedy of the Kanto earthquake, something that devastated Japan, something very pure was about to come into the world, and I like to think of this as the yin-yang symbol, uh, like a kind of balancing where you can have darkness and then you can have lightness. So, around two months after the Kanto earthquake, a Japanese Akita puppy was born on a nearby farm on November the 10th, 1923. In 1924, Ueno would visit this farm to purchase his beautiful Akita puppy and take his new friend home with him. And it was on this day, a very special, very precious bond was established. Ueno named his beautiful Akita puppy Hachi. Although the dog is better known as Hachiko, and that is what we will be naming him from now on. And I will explain towards the end of the episode why the name was changed later on. When fully grown, Hachiko was a golden light brown dog with a dash of peach colour to his face. And he stood at 2 feet 1 inches tall and weighed around 90 pounds. Right from the beginning, the bond between Hachiko and Ueno must have been very clear to see. Wherever Ueno went, Hachiko was sure to follow. Every day, Ueno would make his way to the train station to start his daily commute to the university, and every single day, Hachiko would follow by his owner's side. When Ueno reached the station, I like to imagine that he said his goodbyes to Hachiko, maybe patted his loyal friend on the head, and then boarded the train. Ueno would then begin his journey to the university and commence his busy day teaching in the agricultural lectures. After finishing his classes, he would then take the train back and return back at the station at 3pm exactly, and every day at 3pm, Hachiko would be patiently waiting for his master at the train station. And I can only imagine the happiness and excitement that must have filled Hachiko as Ueno approached him and greeted him, and then they would start their walk back home, and then, the next day, do it all over again. The pair did this every single day. Ueno would say bye, board the train, go to work, and then return to be greeted by Hachiko every day at 3pm without fail. This probably continued for about a year until one day Ueno would say his goodbyes for the very last time. On May the 21st 1925 Professor Ueno died at work of a cerebral hemorrhage. Ueno would not be returning to Hachiko again but of course Hachiko didn't know this and that day Hachiko waited at the station for his owner to return. I mean, you can almost imagine it from the point of view of Hachiko. Sat there waiting whilst all the commuters spill out of the station, and Hachiko desperately scanning the crowd looking for his owner, and the confusion he must have felt as the last passenger left the station, but Ueno was nowhere in sight. And obviously, to me and you, Ueno was not going to be returning to meet Hachiko at the train station ever again, but of course Hachiko wouldn't have known this or understood this. And so, every day for the next 10 years, Hachiko would turn up at the station desperately looking for his owner, hoping he would return to him. Now, apparently after Ueno's death, Hachiko was given away to a few different families. However, this didn't stop the dog from escaping and finding his way to the train station to try and meet his master every day at 3pm. 
Now at first Hachiko's presence at the station was met with anger by some of the commuters and station staff and there are also some reports of cruelty towards the dog, such as beatings, because initially he was seen as a nuisance and possibly a stray due to his appearance, I think he was a little bit scruffy at times. However, it wasn't long until this all changed and people started to hear Hachiko's story and realised the dog was nothing but loyal to his dead master and longed to be reunited with him. People started to appear from far and wide just to see Hachiko. You see, Hachiko was now becoming somewhat of an icon at the train station. It wasn't long before people started bringing food for Hachiko as he waited at the station for his owner's return. People would also pose for photographs and just in general like to show their love towards the dog and Hachiko was always a friendly dog who took it all in his stride. It wasn't long before one of Professor Wayno's students heard the stories of Hachiko waiting at the station and decided to have a look for himself. He boarded the train at the university and arrived at the station at 3pm to have the stories confirmed. As he exited the station, he could see the Akita dog patiently sat there looking for his owner. The student patiently waited until Hachiko decided it was time to leave the train station and as Hachiko walked away, Wayno's student followed. The student followed Hachiko for quite some time and eventually Hachiko arrived at his new home, which was Ueno's former gardener. Ueno's old gardener then filled the student in on the story of Hachiko's life before and after Ueno's death. The student then went on and published Hachiko's story to a few newspapers and it wasn't long before Hachiko's story spread throughout Japan. And this is when the story of Hachiko became even more well known than he already was. You could say the dog became famous. The number of people that visited Hachiko at the station went up considerably and it became also like a symbol of loyalty and love in Japan. People would come from far and wide just to meet Hachiko. I also heard stories of school children visiting Hachiko because apparently the teachers thought this was a valuable lesson to teach the children about loyalty and love, which I thought was very nice. It is also said from time to time Wayno's widow, if you like, although unmarried, would turn up at the train station just to see Hachiko and whenever she did this, Hachiko would greet her with a lot of affection and love, always happy. As we all know, time passes by fast and old age came upon Hachiko, but this didn't stop him from walking to the train station every single day for almost 10 long years, hoping today was the day his owner would finally return to collect him. However, as time did pass by, his popularity did not decrease. In fact, Hachiko was always a friendly dog with anyone who ever visited him. The internet has plenty of photographs with Hachiko posing with his admiring fans, who came from far and wide to meet him, and they fed him treats. And people turned up to see Hachiko, even in his old age. Time had taken its toll on Hachiko. He was now an old dog, riddled with arthritis and probably more ailments. But still, his loyalty for his dead master didn't falter and every day at the same time Hachiko would still arrive at the station and eagerly wait. In 1934, Hachiko had been waiting for his master every day for 9 years and it was in 1934 that a statue was erected in honour of the faithful dog. A bronze statue that had the likeness of Hachiko. And perfectly, on the day that the statue was unveiled, Hachiko actually turned up. He arrived at the station and witnessed the whole thing and there were actual pictures of that day. As I said, every single day at 3pm Hachiko would turn up at the train station. However, on the 8th of March 1935, Hachiko failed to arrive at the station. Sadly, the beloved faithful dog was found lying dead in the street. Hachiko's lifeless body was fittingly taken to the train station's baggage room, apparently a place he frequently visited. It was there that he was gently laid down on the floor, whilst members of the train station all crowded around him for one last photograph. Wayno's widow can also be seen in the photograph, who had arrived at the station to show her respects to Hachiko for one last time. Hachiko had died of natural causes. Apparently the poor dog had cancer and a filaria infection. There was also four food skewers found in his stomach, but this didn't harm the dog in any way. After his death, Hachiko's remains were cremated and his ashes were buried next to his owner, Professor Ueno. And at long last, Hachiko was now reunited with his best friend. Hachiko's fur had been preserved and stuffed and mounted, and this was placed on display at the National Science Museum in Japan, and it's still there to this day. During his life and afterwards, Hachiko became an icon for loyalty and was used as an example for faithfulness for school kids all over Japan. The statue I mentioned that was built in 1934 was sadly melted down to be used for supplies in World War II. 
but in 1948 the son of the original artist rebuilt the statue and that is the exact same statue you can find there today standing proud for all to see in the exact spot Hachiko waited all those years. And apparently on the anniversary of Hachiko's death people will come from far and wide as they did when he was alive and leave the dog gifts at the feet of the statue. But this is not the only piece of art that celebrates Hachiko's life and loyalty. There's also a beautiful mosaic on the station wall in front of the exit where the dog waited. This is now called the Hachiko Exit. And even the floor is decorated in colourful paw prints and the manhole covers are decorated in Hachiko's image. In 2015 the University of Tokyo revealed a statue in honour of Professor Ueno and his dog. And I think this is my favourite, the statue shows Ueno and Hachiko finally reunited with Hachiko happily jumping up to greet his master and Ueno's briefcase can be seen on the floor next to him as he embraces his friend. And there are many many more tributes scattered around Japan in honour of Hachiko. Now if you remember I mentioned at the beginning of the episode that Ueno named Hachiko Hachi. Hachi was actually his real name. You see the coal part was actually added later on. Now let me tell you why. Now apparently the coal part of his name is a word that expresses affection in Japanese and this was added in recognition of Hachi's loyalty to his owner. There's also a movie named Hachi and I remember thinking that the movie got on the name wrong or simply changed it for the American audience. However when I was researching this episode I discovered I was dead wrong about that. So his name was actually Hachi but the coal part in the name represented loyalty. And I think that's a beautiful thing. <laughs>